Hi everyone, my name is Monica and I'm here today to walk you step by step in the assembly and installation of your Wallax custom guitar hanger. If you have additional questions, feel free to visit the website at the bottom of your screen, www.wallax.com, or feel free to email us at info at wallax.com. And for those of you who want to speak to a personal representative, feel free to call us toll free at 1-877-38-MY-AX. That is again, 1-877-38-69293. Alright, let's get started. Alright, first we're going to go over the tools that you're going to need to assemble and install your product. You will find inside your box the assembly and installation instructions. I already have mine out, but you'll get yours after you open yours up, which they are listed here. I'm going to go over the tools with you first. First, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. A drill. Make sure it's charged a 3 16 inch drill bit. You may also need a half inch drill bit, and that's for the optional mounting instructions, which I will go over that with you later. A level. And for my sake, I'm going to be using a little level. <laughs> and for those of you who have a stud finder, you will also need this. Now those of you who don't, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to find your stud as well with that one. All right, let's unveil this beauty. Wow, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. First, let's get out our instructions. These are the instructions that I was telling about before. Lay those to the side. Get all of our hardware. As well as our measuring triangle. All right, let's take a look at your instruction sheet. Step number one, detach your wall axe. Now that we have our wall axe laying out in front of us, as you see, there are three mounted spaces on the wall axe. We're gonna start with the center space today. Make sure that you hold on um, to the winged nut as you do this. You're gonna flip up your cardboard, grab your Phillips head screwdriver, and begin to unscrew. Now hardware is going to be coming off the Wallex as you unscrew each of the mounts. Make sure that you do save everything until your Wallex is completely installed on your wall, um, making sure that you don't uh, throw anything away by mistake. Alright, let's lay that down here. And as you see on the top, uh, you have the wing screw a black yoke plate. Um, you don't, you can discard the cardboard square, you cannot need that. Um, you do have um, a mounting ring there that will be used between the wall and your wall axe whenever you hang that. And then you do have this screw here, which actually, um, you can set that aside, but you won't really need that in the assembly process. You will repeat that step for both the base and the headstock mounting kit and then we're ready to begin. All right, now that we unboxed our wall axe, I have all of the hardware laid out here on the table. So if you take a look at step two on your instructions, make certain you have all hardware. I'm gonna go through and point to each piece separately so you make sure that you do know what each piece is. So if you take a look down here, these are the three pieces of cardboard that were used to protect the wall axe um, from the wing nut. You can set these aside, you do not need to use them. Also, you see here, um, these are the three one and three fourth inch screws. You do not need these at all as well. So make sure that you're not confusing these with the screws that you'll need. But these as well you can set aside and discard later on. All right, moving back up, I want to go through um, the list where it says the bag of hardware. I'm going to start there. First, you're going to have two toggle machine screws, which are these screws right here. You'll see that the thread is thinner and it goes the whole way down. There is no break in thread. These are, once again, the toggle machine screws. 
Then you will have six black plate screws. These are the smaller screws in your bag. You will have three yoke plate spacers. These are the black rubber spacers in the bag. You will have two circular foam body cushions, which will be these. These are brown, right here. This is, these will be placed um, between your wall axe and the wall after it has already been hung. Next, you will find three deck screws. These are the deck screws. You will see that there is a space in thread. Help me tell apart. Um, three deck screws. These will be the screws that you use to screw into the stud of the wall. Next you will have your three yokes, which in my case I did not know that was the name of these, but um, the actual hooks that you hang on the guitar, that is what the yoke refers to in case you did not know that. Alright, after the plate screws, uh, we have the yoke spacers, which we see right here three of those, and those will go on to the actual yoke, which is this guy here, and it just slides right on, it doesn't have to screw on or anything. And that is just for extra protection um, whenever you're um, screwing that onto the yoke plate. Alright, next we're going to go into the packaging pad hardware. That was the stuff that you took out of the actual box with the wall axe when you were unscrewing um, everything. So first of all, of course, better make sure that you have a wall axe inside the box. <laughs> kind of hard to miss. Next, you have the three black yoke plates, which we have right here. We have three toggle wing nuts. Three rubber spacers, which you see right here. This is going to be going um, to protect the back of your wall axe in between your wall axe and your actual wall. We'll put that there. Then you're going to have one 25 degree um, triangle. This is to aid you in how to line up the neck of your wall axe. So you don't even need to measure that. And of course all that is left once again is the stuff that we already discarded, those um, three one and three fourth inch screws which we don't need and of course those cardboard squares. It looks like we are ready to move on to mounting. Let's take a look at step four on your instruction sheet. Wall mounting your wall axe. Well, first, before we actually mount it on the wall, we are going to have to find that stud, like I was saying before. If you have a stud finder, I'll show you how to use it here. I'll turn it on. It is located the stud. Then you select, just move it slightly back to find that center, um, and there you go. There we have our stud. Now. Unfortunately, not all of us have a stud finder, so if you don't have one, one typically, um, one typical way to find a stud um, is to find a wall outlet, um, and then you remove the plate, as I have already unscrewed here before, and then you can see which side the stud is on. In this case, um, the stud is to the right of the outlet. If you look on the insides of the outlet, you can find which side um, has been nailed or screwed to the stud, and that's another way just in case you can't actually see the wooden stud there. Once you're confident on where your stud is, you can assume that every 16 inches is another stud. Okay, now that you've found your stud, let's talk a little bit about the horizontal and vertical placement of your wall axe. Now, there's some things that I need to talk about first. You want to make sure that you do not hang your wall axe over any type of heat source, like your fireplace or anything like that. Um, also, you want to make sure that if you're hanging it behind your couch, that it's not going to hang so the base of your guitar is going to rub against the furnishing. As well, you want to make sure that it's not hung too low, whereas if you have small children or animals or you 
know, uh, they'll run through the house. You don't want them knocking over or brushing against your guitars as well. Now, we talked about too low, but what about too high? Whenever you hang your wall axe, you want to leave at least, we recommend about seven inches from the ceiling so that whenever you lift up your guitar, the headstock doesn't hit the ceiling whenever you're placing it in the yoke. All right, I'm going to be using a wall axe model to complete the rest of the installation. All wall axes are exactly the same. Just wanted to use this one because it's a little bit brighter and easier for you to take a look at. Um, once we found how, um, where we're going to place it on the wall, we need to figure out how high we're going to place it. So I did find my stud, and we're going to look here, making sure that you do have enough clearance from the ceiling. What you're going to do after you have your wall axe held on the wall, you're going to take your deck screw, place it right in the center, which you know the stud is there, and you're just going to twist and make that little mark. Now, you do want to make sure that you start with the center hole first for mounting. That one is most crucial to make sure that you do have that through a stud. So looking back at your wall where your screw did make that indentation, you're going to grab your drill making sure that you're using the 3 16 inch bit. This is the bit that is going to be used whenever you drill into a stud. Now that you have your hole drilled, we are going to temporarily mount our wall axe using the center mounting space. You're going to take your deck screw, place it through the center, into the hole that you just drilled into the stud, bit. Using the Phillips head screwdriver, go ahead and tighten that just slightly. You don't want to um, tighten it the whole way in. This is just so you can hang the guitar to get the correct angle. As you see, that can fully support the weight of the wall axe. A little bit easier to manipulate that way. Next, you're going to be taking your triangle as well as your level. Just kind of hold that out of the way and take this to make sure that you do have the horizontal, actually horizontal, there we go. Now that you have that 25 degree angle, you can remove the triangle and take another one of your deck screws and simply twist and mark the space in the headstock as well as down here in the body. After you have those spaces mounted or marked, sorry, you're going to unscrew. and remove the wall axe from the wall. Once the wall axe is removed, you will simply drill the holes for the headstock mount and the body mount, just the same way as we did the center hole. Your wall axe is designed to mount on 16 inch spaced studs. No measuring is required. However, if you do happen to come to a place where you cannot find the stud and you need to drill into drywall, that is where that half inch drill bit is needed. As you see on the wall, it is going to make a larger hole. That is so you can get the wing nut to fit. Now as you see here, on the headstock of your wall axe, I have the toggle machine screw already pushed through the hole. Next, I have the black rubber spacer. You slide that the whole way to the base here. And then you have your wing nut, and you're going to screw that on uh, about an inch from the end. About there. Now, if you look on your instructions, you will also see for the optional wall mounting part, um, that explains this as well. All right, let's take one last look here to make sure that our screw placement is correct. At the top, we're going to be drilling into drywall, so we are using a toggle machine screw, as you see. Our center placement, we're using a deck screw because that is going into a stud. And down at the base, for our example, we are going to be drilling once again into drywall and using the toggle machine screw. 
take note that each placement has that black protector on there. So make sure that they are all there. Okay. You do want that spacer. All right, we're gonna start by screwing in that center screw. Just a little bit, making sure that we do line up the head stock as well as the base with the holes in the wall. Okay, they look to be in the right position. Continuing to screw on that middle screw here further into the stud. Work on pushing that wing nut through the wall. Okay, and we will come back to tighten that later. Don't worry about that. All right, now I purposely let that center screw stick out a little bit further um, because we need to be able to tighten um, the toggle machine screw. So we're going to pull the wall axe just slightly forward, and if they don't line up for you, that's fine. If not, um, I'll show you how to tighten that in with your fingers. Um, for this case, what you're going to do, you're going to put pressure against the wall axe, not too much, and that's so that you're actually tightening the screw into um, the wing nut behind the wall, as you see in this picture. Now, in the instance where you pull that forward and you still have some of that screw sticking out like such, all you have to do is pull the screw towards you and then just twist it to the right. Okay, and eventually it will get to the point where you can hold on to the wall axe um, and go ahead and screw that in the rest of the way. Now that your wall axe is up, take a step back and make sure that everything is secure. If you take a look at your instructions, we are now on step six, installing yoke plates. First, we're gonna grab one of the three yoke plates. And we're going to start um, with the center one just so you can see how it works with the strings. Now, each yoke plate has an X on the back. That X is going to go against your wall axe. The center hole, the one in the middle, is going to be going over top of your mounting screw that you just put in the wall. As you line up the holes, you're going to take two, one at a time, of your um, plate mounting screws. Start that in the hole. Take your Phillips head screwdriver and go ahead and turn those in. Taking notice that you want to make sure that the strings are not behind the yoke plate, nor are they getting caught in the screws as you're tightening them as well. You're going to do the same thing for the headstock and the base. Excellent work so far. All right, if you take a look at your instructions, we are now on step seven, installing the yokes. First things first, you're gonna take your yoke spacer, then your yoke or your padded hook. You're going to place your spacer on the edge there. Line it up with that open hole on your yoke plate. Just hand screw that in there, making sure that you line that up. It might be a little bit tricky at first, but once you get it going, you can tell. You don't want to screw it in too tightly. There you go, nice. And you can always adjust that um, to the neck of your guitar as well. You'll do the same to the headstock as well as down the bass. Last but not least, we're going to be adding the brown body cushions onto our wall axe. These are going to be slipping behind the wall axe body and in front of the wall. This is just to give the wall axe a little bit more stability so it won't shake back and forth. You can place these at your discretion, but 
usually like to try to have that center line so it won't wobble. There you go. Your well axe was designed to support weight a little over 40 pounds, which is double the weight of even the heaviest guitar. Now, our product was intended to keep guitars safe and is not intended for any other use. So, whether you're ready to hang your acoustic guitar, electric guitar, or in my case, a bass guitar, you're now ready to enjoy the beauty of art and function.